to Reddit Aliens. What is the creepiest, most unexplainable thing that you have ever seen but haven't shared anywhere? Serious. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. My grandfather passed away several years ago after many years of dialysis. As he aged, we were told this treatment wouldn't last forever and become less effective and they would have to stop it eventually. He was 83 when he passed, always fit and healthy, and dialysis kept him going a good few years. He was unwell and taken into hospital. His dialysis was stopped and we were told it would probably be around 48 to 72 hours until he passed. So, all the family made our way to the hospital and stayed in the room with him as much as we could. They made him comfortable and was plying him with drugs to make sure he wasn't in pain. As he nears the end, he was in and out of a lucid state, most of the time in a slumber, almost living memories, mumbling and muttering. If he woke up, he would stare transfixed at a point on the ceiling, talking to God only knew who as clear as day, and then he would drift off again. This happened all night. Moments before he passed, he sat up, staring at this point on the ceiling, talking clearer than he had the whole time we were there, holding my grandmother's hand. He turns and looks her dead in the eyes and says that they are asking him if he wants to take a message over to anyone. Was there anything she wanted to say to anyone? When my grandmother said there wasn't, he lay back down, closed his eyes, and passed peacefully. The whole room was silent. Every single hair in my body stood on end. I'm not religious, but I felt I should go straight to church and start praying or something. My mother, who had been a nurse all her life, many years caring for elderly, told me that when a lot of people die, they focus on a point on the ceiling and talk to whatever is there. Her telling me that didn't help at all. Bizarre. My husband and I were walking in the downtown area of Seaside, Oregon. It was late December, so it was pretty sparse and many shops were closed as it was a Sunday morning as well. I stepped into a Celtic shop and it was filled with people, all of whom became silent when I entered. As soon as I crossed the threshold, I felt heavy and blurry. The lady behind the counter said something to me and tried to hand me a pendant. Immediately I saw darkness and dread. Everything felt black. I felt like something was pressing on my chest. I had never felt such darkness before. I somehow ran out of the door and as soon as I was on the sidewalk, I was completely fine, as if nothing had happened. My husband wanted to go in because he loves places like that and it was then I realized that I had no idea why he didn't go in with me in the first place. We were newly married and had been walking with him arm around me so it was very odd. I just said, no, we're not going in there and dragged him away. I have been to Seaside many times since then and the shop is no longer there and I cannot find the place where I remember it to be. When I was about eight or so, my family went up to a campsite near a lake. We went with several other families and they brought their kids too. One thing me and this one kid would do is search the shallow areas for crawdads. As I was searching, I began to venture a ways out until the water was up to my waist. The water wasn't too clear, but it also wasn't muddy and I could see the pale area of the shallows and the darker area where the water dropped off, but I didn't know that at the time. I ended up stepping into darker, deeper water and began to fall in. Before I could, a pale, slender arm grabbed my leg and pushed me back to the shallows. All I saw was the arm as it sunk back into the deeper water before it skittled back to the shore. I remember it as clear as day, but nothing has ever turned up from that lake. No bodies, no drownings, nothing. My parents still think I made it up. Gordian angel, a mermaid, or a merman? I was in middle school, and my sister was in high school, and she was out with her friends. I went downstairs to get a snack, and my parents were in the living room. I started crying and saying I was worried about my sister. She didn't have a cell phone yet, so there wasn't much we could do. Turned out, she had been in an accident. She was fine, but it was scary. A few months later, I was at school and I started crying. I called my mother and told her to call my grandmother. Grandmother didn't answer, so they called the neighbor. And the neighbor checked and she had fallen in the tub and broke her foot. She had been sitting there overnight. I've trusted my gut ever since. A long time ago in primary elementary school, me and my friend came to the school compound on a Sunday to explore. We came in the wee hours in the morning and coupled that it was a Sunday, there was nobody in. We were walking along a corridor on the first floor when suddenly we heard the thunderous noise above us. You know the sound where you drag a chair or table across a floor? It was exactly that. 
but it sounded like there's multiple classrooms full of tables and chairs just moving around. It was loud, very loud, and it was extremely sudden. There's no reason why anybody would be in school, moving dozens of tables and chairs on their own on a Sunday at 6 a.m. We stood rooted, stared at each other for a second, and bolted. After we got out of school, he asked me whether I heard a lady screaming in the corridor. I said no. He didn't hear the dragging sounds either. My brother committed suicide in 2010. He was airlifted 100 miles from his house to the town by us because it's a larger town with great hospitals. His wife, the only person that lived with him, of course, drove her car to the hospital, leaving their house completely closed up and locked. His cell phone was left in his home office by his wife. The next morning, I got a call from his cell phone. I answered, but nobody was on the other end. I said, hi, a couple times with no response. I finally said, everything is okay and the line immediately disconnected. Never got a call from that number again. I used to live in a house with two roommates. Let's call them Anna and Erica. I lived on the second floor, and Anna and Erica lived downstairs. Every night, I would hear this thud, thud coming from downstairs. I would investigate, and it always came from Anna's room. I thought it was her doing burpees or working out at night, which seems dumb looking back. I never talked to Erica about it because I thought it was in my head, and since I was on the second floor, it never really bothered me. Fast forward two years, and we all move into a new house with another roommate, Anna, Erica, and I live on the same floor upstairs. I start hearing the thud thud louder now. I go to Anna's door, and it sounds like she's hitting herself against a wall and whispering and crying or laughing. I also noticed when she left the room, she had her sheets all scattered on the floor. I ask my other roommate Erica about it, and she says she hears it too. Anna starts saying at her parents' house more often, but every time she comes home, we hear the same thud thud noise. We started asking Anna about it, and she makes up excuses like, I was moving furniture, or my porch door was swinging open. After we started questioning her more, she only came to our house maybe once a month to pick up some clothes. It was so strange. I never think we'll get an explanation. I was in bed at night, woken up by the sound of steps on my roof tiling. I think I was about 13 at the time. I see a shadow walk past my skylight, unsure of what it was. I look outside my side window and see a man dressed in all black looking out from the construction scaffolding. After a while, he looks into my window and I try to hide. My brother also saw him. We never found out what happened to him, but the police were informed. When my daughter was very young, three to four, we were on a family vacation in a state park lodge. A room had exposed wood ceiling beams to match the decor, important later. It was supposed to be nap time for my daughter, but she was quietly playing by herself and just chatting away, and the wife and I were reading on the other bed. Out of the blue, my daughter turns to me and asks for a piece of rope. I ask why she needed the rope, and she nonchalantly replies, it is for my friend, the purple girl, on the ceiling. My wife asks, what friend? And my daughter responds, I've been talking with the little purple girl hanging from that wood up there, points to the ceiling beams. She asked me for another piece of rope. Needless to say, that nap time was over and we quickly exited the room. A number of years ago, I was using an online chat site and got talking to a woman who claimed to live around 50 miles from me. We chatted quite happily for a couple of days. Then on the third day, a Saturday night, she was online, and we were chatting, but she seemed different somehow. Something just didn't seem right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. She explained that she was drinking, and I assumed that this was the reason behind the melancholy. We continued chatting, and she put on a cam so I could see her there drinking as we chatted. Over a couple of hours of chatting, her mood appeared to grow darker, and she appeared distressed, but was hesitant to elaborate further. She left, then returned around 30 minutes later and appeared drunker and more distressed, this time, she had a stack of tablets on the table in front of her. She claimed that she couldn't go on and started to take tablet after tablet. I had no idea what this medication was. She was continuing to take more and more tablets and her speech was getting more and more slurred. I was suddenly in a terrible position. Was I seeing someone take their own life on a live stream and totally unable to do anything? All I had was a name and a town, both of which could be false. I made the excuse of needing the toilet and left the room and took this opportunity to call my local police and explain the situation. The police took what details I knew and I was told to go back and try to keep her talking and try to get further details from her. They sent a plain-clothed officer to my house and whilst I was chatting to her, 
He pulled up the chat logs and history on his laptop. By this time, her speech was becoming more and more incoherent, and the cam was knocked, so it was impossible to see her. Soon, the connection was lost. Was this real? Was it fake? I had no idea of knowing. The police officer was, during this time, on the phone with his station, giving them what information he had been able to obtain. He then left, leaving me to contemplate. The next evening, I got a call from the local police station, who wanted to thank me. The police had managed to trace her through her IP address and had been able to attend. It apparently was a genuine suicide attempt, and she had been taken to hospital and was subsequently undergoing treatment. When I was 20, I visited a town in Italy that has a number of medieval towers that you can climb. My girlfriend didn't want to climb any, so I went up one on my own and was the only person at the time doing so. It was a sunny day when I entered the tower. There was a flight of stairs that wound around the edge of the tower and no windows. Climbing the tower took at the very most five minutes. At the top of the stairs, there was a ladder and a trap door that opened up onto the roof of the tower. When it opened, I found the weather had changed dramatically and was overcast and threatening. I forgot it, there was a thunder or not, but I was genuinely concerned about lightning. Being at the top of a tall tower in that weather, I cautiously climbed out onto the roof just to have a quick look before going straight down. The roof was surrounded with a sort of metal cage of bars that were clearly intended to prevent anyone from falling or jumping off the tower. I heard some thunder and saw electricity arc between some of the bars. Not a blinding lightning strike, just arcing. I decided that the tower was imminently going to be struck and descended to quickly as I could. At the bottom, I was surprised to find the weather was again sunny with a clear sky. My girlfriend could tell I was shaken and was amazed when I told her I thought that maybe there had been lightning. The weather hadn't changed whilst I'd been up the tower. I've started to tell this story a couple of times, but it's just too weird to expect anyone to believe. I have literally no explanation. I'm very much a skeptic when it comes to the paranormal. I'm not religious, and I've had no other weird experiences like this. In short, I'm not your stereotypical, spooky things happen to me kind of person. And yet, this could make a great short story. I like the twist of the identical twin, so you thought it was her, but it was really you. Good. When I was five, me and my identical twin sister both caught scarlet fever. We're from America, but my dad's project had temporarily relocated us to India, and we were not used to the water and food there. We both fell into a coma towards the end of the fever. One day, I woke up to my mom and aunt screaming and crying and holding my sister because she was unresponsive and not breathing. They were doing chest compressions, CPR, etc., but nothing was working. I was desperately trying to get their attention because I was young and didn't understand what was going on. I went back in my room to go back to sleep, but in the corner of the room where my sister's bed was, I saw her laying there, breathing fine. I went back out to the living room and realized I was looking at myself in my mom's arms as she tried to revive me. Eventually, I saw my eyes flicker open and then everything went dark. I woke up a few weeks later in the hospital next to my sister and mom, who ended up catching it because of us. My mom told me I'd almost died and they were trying to wake me but I was unresponsive, so the ambulance took all three of us into the ICU. To this day, I'm still unsure how I witnessed my almost death. I was young and digital cameras were a new thing. I was obsessed with them and my mom would buy me a camera. We'd try it and see if we liked it and if it was shitty we'd take it back. We purchased a cheap one. Indoor pictures had a red and yellow hue. It had long exposure so a lot of the times there were streaks and weird stuff. I took a picture of my room one day and plugged it up to the computer to view the picture. There was a full-blown man wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt with a hat. There were also light streaks in the picture but he clearly looked different from the imperfections. Like there was a man actually there in mid-walking motion. I called my mom right before commenting this to ask if she remembers that. She said she didn't really. I don't believe her because the camera immediately disappeared after this event and she never got me another. When I think about it now in my late 20s, it still makes tears come to my eyes because the house I grew up in was so scary and weird. I've never felt like that in any other home. Something was off. Back when I was nine or so, me and my friend were having a sleepover. His parents were at a dinner, and his brother was out getting stoned somewhere. Anyways, it was probably 9 p.m. His parents had just called and said that dinner had turned into drinks, and they would be out for a little while longer. 
Anyways, we were young, playing Minecraft on the Xbox 360. When we heard his front door open, it had a very noticeable noise when it opened, very creaky, almost eerie. So we thought, oh, it's probably just your brother, and kept playing, thinking nothing of it. Then we heard footsteps on the floor above us. We once again thought nothing of it, seeing as his kitchen was above the basement where we were playing games, and his brother was likely there for mid-high munchies. But then we heard another set of footsteps. We were confused at this point, but we didn't worry as it was either his parents or a stoner friend of his brother. We then heard a scratching at the basement door. We both looked at each other like, is that just me or is there a scratching? He didn't have any pets, so me being the oldest by two months, went to go check. I opened the door and there was nothing there. I yelled upstairs to his brother, let's call him Jim. Jim, you're scaring us, stop it. No reply. So I sat back down and continued playing. Now there was a scratching on the window. We were honestly terrified, then we stayed seated, one of us looking at the door, the other looking at the window. Then, again, scratching at the door. I opened it with a baseball bat in hand and nothing. We barricaded the door and put things in front of the window. We didn't hear anything for the next half an hour and eventually fell asleep. The next morning, his dad came down and knocked on the door and tried to get into the basement. We took down the barricade and his dad came into the room furious. Why the hell did you guys rip open the screen door? We went upstairs and sure enough, the front door's screen was shredded. We tried to convince him that it wasn't us and that the brother had done it to scare us. But what he said next made our blood run cold. Jim wasn't home at all last night. We dropped him off in the city with his friends. My friend's house was half an hour away from the city and none of the people at his friend's house had cars. Me and my friend looked at each other and couldn't speak. Needless to say, his parents didn't believe us. They called my parents and me and my friend had to split the cost to have the basement door replaced. It had tons of scratch marks as well and the screen door replaced. Me and my friend still bring this up to this day, whenever we meet. When I was about 11 or 12, I went with my friend and my younger brother to play football in a park that was in a pretty remote place, so there were never many people. Basically, three or four people came dressed in like Victorian style clothes, set up a box underneath a tree with big branches, tied a rope around it, one of them stood there with this noose around his neck, and then his friend kicked the box so he was hanging. They took turns doing this, and we left. It was super weird thinking back to it, and I have to check with my brother whenever I think about it to make sure it actually happened. Maybe it was a high school photography project or maybe a student film. I don't know. It was 2014, I think. I got my first job in a really strict company where being late is a crime, so I was never late. But one time I forgot to set my alarm and it's already past 7 a.m. I rushed to work and really saw everyone outside rushing too felt the morning sun on my skin. When I got on the company premises, there's this long walk we had to take. It's outside. So I just casually walked fast to my office when I noticed that it's getting darker and the people I'm walking with seem to decrease in number. It's a big company and there's a lot of employees. When I came to the entrance, it got really dark, like early morning dark, and the guards were surprised to see me and told me, whoa, you're early. I'm confused. I look at the time and saw it's only around 6 a.m., I had to wait till 7 a.m. for them to let me inside the office. I was so shocked I just sat there and waited. I'm pretty sure it should be around 8 a.m. already. I didn't tell this to anyone because it seems crazy even for me. I tried searching the net for this kind of what they call time slip. I don't know if that's what it was and up to now I'm still confused on what happened back then. P.S. I'm not a crazy person. Several years ago, my friends and I were road tripping cross country and we stopped at a campsite in Southern Oregon. Something about this unassuming place made us all uneasy. It felt like everyone was staring at us as we drove in and set up our tents. We'd gotten that treatment in places where we'd stuck out, but here it seemed less like gawking and more like suspicion, malice. The sun set, our gear was set up and we got in the car to smoke some legal weed before bed. We were talking and passing a pipe around and my friend in the back seat had the door cracked with his knee against it. With no warning, something slammed into the car hard enough that the back seat friend was pushed away from the door and the whole car rocked on its suspension. We immediately started the engine, turned on the brights and drove around our area looking. Nothing. We fell asleep in the car arguing over if anyone was willing to get our gear before we went to a motel. 
When I was a kid, I was playing in our kitchen when I saw a huge dark figure walk past the kitchen and down the hallway leading to the bedrooms. I walked to our back patio and saw the rest of my family watching TV. The patio is on the opposite side of the house from the hallway. I walked to the hallway and started looking for who it could have been but never found anyone. Still have no idea who or what it could have been, but it's always creeped me out thinking about it.